Hey, hey homos. homos. Welcome back. Season two. It's been a long time on it, it Jolly. It has. I've missed it. It feels so weird, like, having that long break, because it's probably been, what, two, three months, but it feels like six. It feels like forever. It um, does. We've I've, missed you guys. We've forgotten how to do this. We we've, have. we've just spent the last five minutes laughing off camera, so <laughs> we don't really know what Saying, we're doing. Saying, hey, homos, for, like, five times in a row. <laughs> but it has been, I've really missed it, and I've, in, I've missed the structure as well. Like yeah. it, we used to be so structured with our, our routine and I I felt lost without you guys. Our life has gone to shit without you guys. So. How have you been? <laughs> I haven't seen you for ages. I know. If you don't realise, me and Keegan, obviously we're partners and we live together. So I was like, when we when we do the first episode, we need to have a little catch up. And Keegan was like, what about? <laughs> what <laughs> we we see each other every we day. We literally had breakfast together this morning. <laughs> um, but here we are, season two, bigger and better than ever. There's going to be lots of stuff coming your way uh mm -hmm. we're going to be covering some really big topics we're going to be getting guests in so we're going to be peppering those in in yeah. and amongst um so really really exciting mm -hmm. as you might have seen we did a photo shoot didn't we, John? we did we have some cool new photographs which so our logo has changed not just this one this one's had a subtle change if any of you notice it let us know comment down below if you're watching on youtube um if you're listening then you can't just say, a guess. It, say it out loud <laughs> to the car. <laughs> uh, but we've had, yeah, a change of logo, a photo shoot. We, we just even got some with the thicker. dogs in as well, didn't we? We did. The dogs came with us. It was yeah. so cute. They, they were, were so misbehaved. They had big riders. Big, big <laughs> riders. Um, yeah, so we've got that. We're also going to be launching uh, our members uh, section on yeah. our Happy Healthy Homo YouTube channel. This is yeah. Joel's remit. Yes, uh, I'm a I'm a YouTuber. If you didn't know, guys, but um, we are launching memberships on our YouTube channel. So what we're going to be doing is two members only live streams every single month. Yeah. So if you would like that, if you enjoy live streams, if you want to have a chat with us twice a month, you know, Q and A's, just a catch up, whatever you want, um, then it's six ninety nine a month. It's going to be available, as I said, over on YouTube. If you're listening to this, yeah. Um, or if you are on YouTube, just click join next to subscribe, and you'll get the options there. Yeah, we're also going to be doing some happy healthy homo merch so if you remember you'll get discount on that yeah and we're looking at doing some live events mm -hmm. so if you are a member you will get first dibs at tickets and get in there yeah um we're going to keep that we're going to keep that uh, our clouds close to our chest on that one but that, that that's going to be some yeah some good stuff coming your way and we, we wanted to bring you as much content this kind of started off as a trickle didn't it with season yeah. one and then we've done some of the um, Agony Ant. Did we ever come up with a title for that? <laughs> no, I think some people suggested like helpful homos, which I was like, it's nice, but I just it doesn't have a uh, ring to it. And it's not necessarily helpful, but yeah, <laughs> the, the, yeah. So if you if you've got any any anything like that you, you want us to cover, you can get in touch with us. Mm -hmm. uh, hello at happyhealthyhomo.com. It's been a long time since. Yeah, said that. glad I got that right. Um, <laughs> please send your emails there if you've got anything that you'd like us to cover on there, and we're going to be doing a live a free live once a month we want to bring you yeah. as much content as we can so please uh subscribe to our youtube channel yeah. obviously if you're on the podcast that's great as well yeah. thank you very much so that's all the parish notices over with sorry we've just splurged there and it inundated you with lots of things to do <laughs> or yeah. not do yeah we're not the boss of you you can do what you want <laughs> um but today's episode we thought we'd talk about film and tv and representation in we did say the media but it's not really the media we're talking about film and television well we're, we're over egging ourselves there actually what we wanted to do was jump on the phenomena that is barbie um, <laughs> barbie and red white and royal blue on yeah, amazon prime yeah there was some stuff that we watched and it got us chatting about representation on mm -hmm. tv in media um how it's evolved parts of it that are problematic have been problematic are still problematic yeah uh, and we just thought we'd chat but first of all joel yeah. did you enjoy barbie I did. I really liked it. Do you know what? I wanted to go see it. Keegan was like, oh, I'm not that bothered. But I think we came out of it, you enjoying it even more than I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Because I I was like, critique, not critiquing it, but dissecting it Yeah, uh, as like a, a pro-feminist, uh, anti-patriarchy, <laughs> like a, everything that it is. Whereas uh, I just watched it and was like, oh, I like the colours. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Gosling looks good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does look good with blonde hair. Yeah. Um, 
The yeah, it was good. Well. And yeah. The abs helped. And I ordered a, a well, Joel ordered for me. I, I'm I'm Kenuff. Yeah, you know jumping. the tie dye fluffy hoodie that says I am Kenuff. Keegan really wanted it as so soon I, as it came on. As it. soon as it came on screen, I leaned over to Joel and I went, I need that. Yeah. So um, when that arrives, maybe you'll wear that on one of the episodes when the that arrives. But it's still on pre-order. So. But yeah, but we we uh, Barbie aside, if you've not seen it, go see it. It's worth it. It's a really good film. Well yeah. done, um, Alan. Because we, we, we were talking about yeah. Alan, right? So Michael, Michael, Sarah, Sarah plays a character called Alan. I don't know if Alan really existed. Did the, the doll Alan exist? I don't think so. Okay, no. so he's I, th- he's he's a gay man, right? I think that's it's never like explicitly said, but it's basically hinted at that. If you haven't seen Barbie, this isn't a spoiler. <laughs> Everyone in Barbie Land is called Barbie or Ken, all a- of them, apart from Alan. Apart from Alan, who sort of hangs around with the Barbies more than the Kens. He's the one that's left out all the time. When all the Barbies sort of left Barbie land... Uh, he wanted he, to leave. He wants to he leave. Because he didn't fit in with the Kens. And so it was just... It was such a small role, and it hardly took up any of the film. But I think lots of gay people have identified with it because they go, oh, like, I know some people buck the trend. I think you're one of them. You don't have many female friends. But I think lots of gay guys do have lots of female friends, me being one of them. And I remember, like, waiting outside the toilets for all my female friends to, like, finish going to the bathroom together and putting makeup on or whatever, or feeling like I don't fit in with the other boys. And it was just like, that is a, that's a, I, that's an, a nice touch, I thought, yeah. of the film. Um, and now lots of people are saying they want the Alan film. Yeah, well, watch this space. <laughs> yeah, but it kind of got us on to representation because obviously Joel can identify with that version of what a gay man is mm-hmm. to have loads of female friends and to hang around and to not necessarily feel like they fit in with the Ken, the Kens, the, yeah. the guys, um, and how we, you know, we were talking about Heartstopper, yeah, which new season's out. Um, we watched it and I was like, I do not no. get not that I don't get it, I get it. It doesn't really It doesn't resonate with us. Yeah. We're not Heartstopper super It's not fans. aimed at us though. No. I don't feel like it's aimed at thirty odd year old yeah. gay men. But it's aimed at a very very yeah. much younger audience, which is amazing, yeah. wonderful, brilliant. But it's it it to the point is repre- you can't represent everybody with one thing, which is what yeah. I think the media has been guilty of in the past. With... Well, they just want to tick this box, don't they? And they go, oh, if we've got a gay character in here, then that's that covered. But we're learning that it's like, oh, actually, you can't just represent the whole gay community in one character. Yeah. For example, I identified a bit with Alan from the Barbie movie, but you didn't because yeah. that wasn't what you've related to. And I think the reason we didn't enjoy Heartstopper as much as most people is maybe because, because we're miserable. Because we're miserable. Uh, uh, well, from my perspective, it was because I was like, well, I can't really relate to this sickly sweet, like two young boys falling in love at school. And Ooh, like, look at the jealousy. No, it's not. <laughs> well, maybe it is. Maybe I am bitter. There is an element of but, that. No, there. but it, the point I'm trying to make is not that I'm jealous or bitter. It's that I can't relate to that story. Therefore, I didn't enjoy it that much. Whereas... I could relate to a bit more of the relationship in Red, White, and Royal Blue, even though I'm because neither a prince, a prince nor a president's son. Uh, but I could relate to that story a bit more, but, and therefore I enjoyed it a bit more. But do you have to relate to everything that you watch on TV? Because I don't relate to being Captain America, but I still enjoy watching it. Well, you should. You look like Captain America to well, me. I'll be more Captain Yorkshire, thank you. But, uh, <laughs> hey, up. <laughs> yeah, maybe you don't, but uh, maybe I'm thinking too deeply about it. Yeah, but this you... is why we want to have this discussion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it, it's interesting how... M- I, I, I said this morning, didn't I? Does it matter? Is it important to see gay faces in high places, mm. you know, as main characters or in, um, you know... The, the main role or positive uh, like positive representation in, in good spots as opposed to negative tragedy yeah hiv dying being beaten up because that is historically what gay representation yeah. has been and some of it is great like it's a sin on channel four that's yeah. obviously miserable show all about the aids and but HIV also finding a- the epidemic but it was really good and it found the joy in it as well like yeah. it wasn't just a misery fest but i think there's a place for both isn't there like that historically happened is important that we like consume like tv and film based around that but it is we were discussing that that christmas film jingle all the way 
not jingle all the way. That, that's that, that, that's, that's Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> single all the, the way. That classic gay film. Although single I, all the way. I would recommend jingle all the way. That if you've was never your seen gay awakening. Yeah. Anyway. No, 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 that was a joke. Uh, <laughs> but that film was really nice because it didn't. It wasn't about tragedy. There was no coming out. There wasn't a, a pain in it. The pain was, do you love your best friend or not? Now, what do you think about this? This is something that I've thought of that I'm like, I don't know if I believe this or not, but as great as gay lead storytelling is, so for example, Red, White and Royal Blue, if you haven't seen it on Amazon, it's very good. It's like a Hallmark movie. It's a bit cheesy, but with a gay centric love story at the center of it. Mm. And I'm like, that is great. But I almost think the casual mentions, like just a normal, like let, not, let's not say normal, a straight story, but with gay characters, I think almost normalizes. You mean rather than going, this person is gay. Oh my God, they're gay. Like well, it's yeah. just a throw, Instead of like saying, it being a throwaway thing. This is because I'm sure there'll be people that will go, I'm not watching Red, White and Royal Blue. It's a gay film. I'm not interested. Yeah. As opposed to we were saying Shrinking on Apple TV. Yeah, very good. Mainly straight storylines. In fact, it's not anything to do with being gay, being straight. It's just about real human beings yeah, so and then one of the straight characters happened to have a gay best friend yeah. and i was like i think that sort of storytelling is amazing because like you said you were like they didn't make a big thing of it they yeah. weren't going oh my gosh a straight man has a gay man as a best friend yeah. what it, it was just accepted and it was just normal and it was yeah. i think that does better for the community than this film is full of gay people this film is full of straight people like why can't you just mesh them together yeah because that's the world the the, the world that we live in um where there's all sorts right there's yeah. all sorts of people of colors creeds races religions and what have you mm. um and rather than it being on the nose and hammering the point yeah that he's gay or she's gay or they're trans or they're black yeah. or they're it's just you know what, what what it is it's like on netflix where they have the lgbtq plus section which I'm not anti, and I think that's great because sometimes you, as a gay person, you do want to watch a gay story. But I'm like, but they don't have a straight section, and it's just like I, I think it's better to incorporate it into as much media as possible, well, rather I, I than think, separate it uh, well, into two I think, things. I think so, but I would also disagree with you on that because I think um, I believe the phrase is positive discrimination, okay. where you're kind of. We spoke about this, didn't we, when we went to. Um, we were talking about comedians, c slightly going off piste. Slight tangent. We've we, just been to Edinburgh. We, 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 we went to Edinburgh Fringe Festival, um, and we're talking about comedians and about people being scared of being cancelled, and yeah. people and comedians complaining that they can't say mm -hmm. what they want to say, yeah, um, because they're scared of being cancelled. And and we talked about there being when there's been a social injustice, there's an overcorrection, yeah, where everybody kind of goes whoa and and then it kind of comes back to where it should and it be mellows a bit. Yeah. yeah and people who have maybe been on one side of the pendulum swing and then it goes to the other and then they fa kind of feel like they're the the bad guys or mm. they're you know villainized or that's the thing we, that where people have been called if you're a straight white man you're the bad guy mm. well no you're not but historically given what's gone yeah. on with that you know me too and all all, all yeah. these other stuff that's gone on the over correction political correctness or whatever you want to call it just actually being considerate of what people how people want to be yeah. referred to you know it's gone the other it's it's yeah. had that over correction and i feel like it's kind of leveling back off now and i think that's the case of what is, has happened with the media yeah. there's been this misrepresentation on or, or under under representation is probably right where it's been prejudice prejudicial stereotyping mm. and it's now moved to more positive affirming yeah. representation yeah. and people go well we didn't actually give you any representation so here's a full section yeah. like i think that's what yeah. it is and i think that's not a bad thing no and don't get me wrong i'm not saying that there shouldn't be those gay led films absolutely there should be but i have loved shrinking where the main character's best friend was gay i loved the last of us where in one of the episodes there was a gay couple oh, that was a good but episode. it wasn't like a thing it wasn't like a this is where the gay episode hammered. it was like We've just met two more characters and they're gay and they've been in a relationship. Like, I love it where it's just sneakily in there. Last of the episode was, uh, Last of Us was not sneakily in there. It was a full episode dedicated well, no, but, to those two people. But a full episode in a series, 
like that wasn't about that is yeah. my point i think you're deliberately being obtuse with me because you know we're on the same side <laughs> I, i'm just offering it i'm playing devil's avocado yeah uh, but i absolutely i think gay led storylines are amazing and it's amazing that they're happening and they're getting such uh big budgets and like a big push behind them mm. but i also just like the sneaky little representation here and there yeah i, I and we we need we need both, right? Because yeah. we're all the main characters in our own lives, right? So I know I am. So you are. Um, <laughs> I certainly am. So as gay men, we want to see that. We yeah. want to see some, you know, call uh, what is it? Call my name. Call me by my name. Call me name. Uh, call me by your name. By your name. Uh, call me by your name. Not the Re Cheryl Corso. <laughs> call, is that call my when name? You call my name. <laughs> Not the Cheryl Corso. Um, the Timothy Chalamet and the guy who eats people. Yeah. Not allegedly. Um, Arnie Hammer. Arnie so. Hammer. Uh, Call Me By Your Name. Red, White yeah. and Royal Blue, gay led stuff. And then yeah. stuff with it, you know, where yeah. it's a side quest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this has got my gaming head on. <laughs> um, where it's a, a side storyline or whatever. Yeah. We need a bit of everything. And that's, I think that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Um is that we've gone from a place where there was no representation, yeah. underrepresentation, where people were just desperate to be represented by just want to see a gay face on screen. Yeah. And then people see it and they go, well, that's not my life. That doesn't represent mm. me. And then I think it's taken a long time for m people who make TV and film to catch yeah. up and go, well, there is actually nuance to gay people. It's not just... Yeah. The, and and that's what's fed into this thing that a lot of gay men have is am i doing gay right mm. because there's this image that's perpetuated whether it's on tv whether it's in the media yeah. whether it's on social media um and people go oh I, i'm not like that i don't yeah and now we're we're seeing that expanding yeah. with heart stopper with maybe mm. not red white and royal blue that's probably <laughs> not a good example but what are your views on straight actors playing gay roles I mean, because the both the actors in Red, White, and Royal Blue, we did the classic gay thing. You get your phone out, you go on the personal life section of their Wikipedia page. Both of them are straight, apparently. Yeah, I mean, so spaghetti until you boil it. <laughs> um, I, I don't, I don't really know. I, I, it's acting. Mm. It's you know, is Ian McKellen really a wizard? Do we need to employ <laughs> wizards to be Gandalf? Um, and I just kind of think, I think if it's something where so if someone has a disability, mm. give the job to someone with a disability, mm. um, you know, or if it's someone who's gone through a particular process, I don't know what that might be, divorce or something more extreme. Like, mm. was, I, don't, I don't, I honestly don't know. The whole point of being an actor is yeah. to pretend. Yeah. It, it's like that extra scene where he's talking about, I am an actor and I yeah. get the lines and I pretend to be the person who's saying <laughs> the lines. That's what acting is. Yeah. So I don't know. Cause then it's like, because it's got to work both ways. Yeah. You and know, you can, can, would so, want gay people to be able to play straight people. What was the one that we watched? Platonic. Yeah. He's gay and mm -hmm. he played a straight man. Yeah. Married to Rose Byrne. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I can't remember his name. So should he not? Yeah. Should, I can't remember yeah. his name either. Looks, looks good though. Yeah. I follow him on social media, but his name is like 10 minutes longer or something. Literally, it's called 10 minutes something. I'm like, just have your Instagram thing as your name. Uh, okay. <laughs> so uh, th there's a series called him. Platonic. There's a series called Platonic. Uh, and that as a, yeah. a an actor who, he's also in single in, single all, all the way. way who plays a gay man in that he plays a gay man in but that he and he is gay but he plays a straight man in that so well, should think, he not get that yeah. gig I, I don't i feel like i think it's acting and i agree i think that you know it doesn't really matter but i do think it's a nice touch when for example it's a sin that we spoke about which was a story about the gay uh hiv epidemics starting in new york and then coming to london I'm pretty certain that it was like most of the cast, if not all the cast, identified as queer in some way and they mm. refused to cast anyone who was straight. Yeah. And I thought that was a nice touch for a story that was so close to the gay community. Yeah. However, oh, yeah. I'm not offended when a straight man plays a gay man, but I did enjoy the fact that everyone in It's a Sin yeah. was queer. Well, Rus Russell T. Davis is a genius yeah. and he wrote that and, and I think he produced it and, and mm. was, was on board with it. And he also did Queer as Folk, the UK version. Yeah. Um, my but, friend's livid about that he's an actor and he wasn't out at the time and his agent was like look I know we haven't had this conversation I know it's quite personal but there's something I really want to submit you for because you'd be perfect for it but you have to be gay or queer in some way so I'm just asking and he was like no 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 I'm not this is for it's a sin for it's a sin and he, he then he then uh, he then 
came out later down the line and when he was talking to me about it, he was like, I really regret it. And I was like, I think not to rub salt in the wound, but I think you would have got it because you would be perfect for for that role. Yeah. But, but, anyway, but, but tangent. Uh, the Russell T. Davis also wrote Queer as Four, mm-hmm. which came out early 2000s. Like Charlie yeah. Hunnam's not gay. Yeah. He's a big Hollywood actor now. Yeah. Um, and he plays it well. And also, what is it? Modern Family? Modern Family. The, the, yeah, yeah. The, the, the one who's not gay in real life is the big old, the bigger the big guy. Yeah. He's he's amazing yeah. and, and plays it amazing. And there's no gay man who looks at that and goes, "That's not funny." No, because it is funny and he yeah, does it really brilliant. well. So yeah. if someone's good, give them the gig. Yeah, give them the gig. Definitely, I think it's got to come down. To I've that, got a question it? for you mm-hmm. about um, Red, White, and Royal Blue. Yeah, how did you feel mm-hmm. when there's for? audience there's like a sexy bit mm. but it's not sexy in the se- like it's it's nothing explicit or anything oh yeah it wouldn't turn anyone on um well it might if you're <laughs> easily turned on <laughs> uh, yeah um how how did you feel watching that yeah well you know because we watched it together and i think both of us went <gasps> oh <laughs> and we're a bit like what well, but it's not for anyone that hasn't seen it it's not graphic and and I think I know you make the point because I know what you're gonna say, but I agree. Where, yeah, what was your reaction? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting flustered now thinking about it. <laughs> is, that, is all of a doodah? <laughs> when I was watching it, like you said, you kind of go, "Ooh, yeah." Um, but I think it's because when I dissected it, and I, and I thought, "Why am I feeling like this? Is this internalized homophobia?" Um, <laughs> Just like and, that. And, and, and this is how oh I thought my about it. My hands on my temples like this. Um, really undramatically. But I think it's because if you were to just swap that out and do exactly the same thing with a man and a woman, no question, like not uncomfortable yeah. at all. So And it, that's what made you question, and am that, I being and internally homophobic? Exactly. Yeah. That's what made me think, is this a me thing? Yeah. And, and yes, it, it, it probably is. But I think it's because we, certainly as gay men, have been conditioned. Mm. And, and you don't or we haven't uh, certainly our generation and older we haven't seen heart stopper and people yeah. you know m- boys men kissing on tv yeah um not boys kissing men on tv uh but y- you know what i mean yeah, yeah. um uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> you didn't need to clarify that but okay uh, um, um and so it's always been a clandestine thing hasn't it that you watch well, it's always it's been, been like lived you in either, the shadows yeah or you watch or yeah. you watch porn which is porn mm. uh, which is a, a, a private thing yeah and then th- there's no in between or you don't see anything yeah. so then seeing something that's somewhere in the middle or because we grew up in the generation where they did start to have in soaps and things like gay kisses and it would hit the news being like severe backlash on coronation street because they feature a gay kiss and yeah. so everything yeah, all, I mean, you a, guys know this. We what, probably watching this. You you've been there. W- yeah, it's with always us, so. a, it's always associated with or has been associated with the negative, and it just makes you go, "Oh God, people yeah. are going to see this." Is this like? Uh, oh because God. I remember the moment we went, "Oh, with red, white, and wo- royal blue." They were naked, <laughs> and they were, but you didn't see anything. Just their top, like their shoulders, just yeah. like you would. And then he placed one of them placed the hand on the lower back of the the other guy. <laughs> And that was it. It was just the hand placing on the lower and back. And a bit of forceful sort of Guiding in. it in. Um, <laughs> that it was, yeah, it made us just go, oh. But then, but it wasn't explicit. Yeah. And it, you're right. That If that was a man and a woman, we see that plenty of times yeah. on TV. So, it's, so it was like, why did we react like that? But I think you're right. It's because we don't see it very often. Yeah, so it's interesting getting used to that and seeing it more now and like it won't even be a thing for it's not a thing for kids no. is it you know you talk no. you're kissing or whatever and they're not bothered yeah. but it was interesting it well i i thought it was interesting because i'm yeah, yeah. Like, for, for me i'm like self-analyzing going oh why did i well yeah because we're very like comfortable that. in being gay so then when something's highlighted oh like dead that, comfy it's like it's like a pair of slippers Play. no but when something's highlighted like that you're you are like hang on but i'm so comfortable with myself why am i reacting like this as if i'm not but it's interesting that there are still these little hangovers of internalized homophobia because we grew up in a homophobic society. Yeah, and it is okay to have that be yeah. a little bit still internalized homophobic. We're all yeah. working through it, but I think from a point where if you sh- if I'd have seen that, yeah. well, either before I came out certainly mm-hmm. or after, I ca- even just after I came out, I would have gone, I would have been crippled with yeah. shame. And then you would have switched on in private. And it, yeah, ex- well, exactly. Well, well, I would have not s- like that. <laughs> I, I would have switched it. I would have, yeah. yeah. 
Whereas now, I, rather than feeling ashamed about it, you go, oh, what's going on yeah. there? And have that self-awareness rather than just, oh. Yeah, definitely. Being paralyzed with it. But yeah, I love those moments where you something highlights, something you've done is highlighted in you and I you're behave. like, why have I behaved like that? Yeah. It's, yeah. So it's, yeah, so it's it's not it's nice to see the evolution of that, you yeah. know, to something that's funny, hallmarky, yeah. funny, rather than. I remember when when I first came out, um, my friend Anthony sent me a care package mm -hmm. of some. It was like these are some gay films or series that you need to watch, okay. and there was um, Milk was in there. There was Angels in America, mm -hmm. which is long. And depressed. I mean, I cried my eyes out halfway up. Wait, it's six hours long, isn't it? So well, I've not seen it. I've read the play, but I haven't seen it on film or at the theatre. Yeah, it was the, on at the theatre. Yeah, it was on at the National. Andrew ago. Garfield was exceptional. Mm. Um, I love Andrew Garfield. Anyway. I know you do. Um, <laughs> I don't I know it. <laughs> um, Queer as Folk was in there. Mm -hmm. the, there was, oh, what was the uh, series with the Jonathan Harvey series? with Beautiful Thing. That was in there. So it's it, the, you can see the evolution of tragedy, tragedy, yeah. a, a, and how it's progressively gotten better. And I think yeah. that's an amazing thing. And also, it's nice to not see gays portrayed as predatory yeah. or evil mm. or seedy as well, mm. because I think that's been something that's been perpetuated in media historically. Although I'd love to play a gay villain in something. Like what? A Gillen. <laughs> what? Karen Gillen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is like a stream of consciousness. Um, I don't know. I just want to play a villain. It doesn't have to be gay. What kind of villain? Do you mean like a villain with a cape? Or do no, you mean... I mean like, like just evil. Cat. Just, you wouldn't suspect him. He he looks like sweet enough on the outside, but deep down... So you're he's talking like more serial, serial killer. killer vibe? Serial oh, killer. Okay. I'd love to play a serial killer. Uh, see, I'd much rather play like a villain with a, a, with cape. a, cape, a cape and a cat. Yeah, that's because you're camp. And you love a costume. <laughs> love a costume. <laughs> uh, well, that brings us to the end of the episode, guys. Episode one of season two. In the can. Yeah. Um, so, recommendations. We started this last season, didn't yeah. we? It's things that we want to recommend for you guys. Yeah. What would you recommend? Nothing. What would you recommend? <laughs> well, I think seeing as we've talked about it, if you've not seen it, Red, yeah. white, and royal blue. Give it a watch. See what you yeah. think. See if it makes you feel a little bit, ooh, what's that? Yeah. Also, jump on the Barbie hype wagon. Mm -hmm. Like, it's worth it. Yeah. Go for it. And if you want to spend $90, get yourself an I Am Knuff hoodie. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. We can, uh, we can be Knuff brothers. Yeah. Don't forget, if you want to send us your questions, your emails for our Agony Aunt series, then you can do hello at happyhealthyhomo.com. Yeah, or you can follow us on TikTok, Instagram, um, Twitter at Happy Healthy Homo or X. Oh yeah, it's not called Twitter anymore. Don't we? No, don't bother about X. Like we don't even. Yeah, care we don't about even. That. We don't even use uh, it. <laughs> and don't forget, if you are on YouTube, then we have memberships available where we do two members only live streams every single month. So come and join us over there if you can. Yeah, and, and please review yeah. on podcasts if you listen to them. If you uh, get them on Spotify or Apple podcasts or wherever yeah. you listen to them leave a review that means that it moves it up the charts and more people get to see it and we can bring more people into the happy healthy homo tribe yeah which is what we want yeah that would be Share, sharing's caring right it is yeah so yeah. we will see you next week and don't forget to join our youtube channel for uh, this week's episode uh, the agony and helpful homos yes. episode which is going to be once a week from now on yeah so there you go see you soon guys thanks guys bye, bye.